Okay. So now look at this. Okay. Environmental factor. So if we always think about genotype is the one that dictates the phenotype, this is not always true. Or I prefer to put it this way, the phenotypes actually equal to, sorry, equal to the interaction. It's the interactions between genotype and also the environmental factor. To put it this way, okay? So it means that it's a both, eh? both. Not only the, the, the genotype give a final say, but it's the interactions, okay? So environmental variation is a variation that causes the environmental factors, okay, caused by environmental factors and influences, okay? In this case, what we look at it, for example, we look at the nutrients, we look at the water supply, soil factor, climate change, those can actually change our uh, phenotypes. For example, uh, for humans, we're exposed to the sunlight. Okay, so pigmentation become darker. So those are the environmental variations. Okay, so if you look at this, how the environmental variations can take place. So this one can go through, and uh, this is for information only. In case you need some information, for example, supply of the nutrients, water supply, soil factor, climate, how it changed the, um, the phenotypes. And very important later, we're going to look at this. Okay. The Himalayan rabbits or the Siamese cats, how the environmental factor give them the effect and cause them to show us the different variations. Okay, uh, so environmental variation cannot be inherited. So that's very, very important. It cannot be inherited. So I put it always, I put it this way. Uh, if you, your genetics, your genetics is a very fair skin, very fair skin, but you prefer to have the outdoor activities. So it means that you always go for a uh, basketball, for example, football. Okay, at the end, your skin pigmentation become dark, but your genetic, it won't change. Always remember environmental factor. Okay, when you talk about environmental factor, can have the effects onto the phenotype. But genotype, no. Okay, if the environmental factor that can cause the genotype to change, that one is the mutation already. Are you clear? That one is the mutations already. Okay, uh? so environmental factor rarely affects okay, quantitative, qualitative characteristics. So it means that they always have the effect onto the quantitative characters. For example, continuous variation, body height, right? Skin pigmentation. Okay, so those are the uh, uh, effects from the environmental factor on top of to on this genetics, okay? So what are the environmental effects onto the phenotypes? So organism phenotype usually result both genetic factor, means the genotype, and also the environmental factor. So it's interaction between these two, okay? So genetically identical individual. So for example, what does it mean genetically identical individual? So we have the identical tweets, for example. So if we put these twins, okay, one in the, for example, one in the, okay, one of them, okay, prefer outdoor activity, one prefer indoor activities. So over a long period of time, you can see that skin pigmentations will be different. Are you clear? Okay, so because it's exposed to different degree of environmental exposure, so produce a phenotypic disorder, right? Eh? So in uh, one, I'll give you two examples here. One is a coat patterns, okay? And also the different in terms of fingerprint patterns. I'll give you two examples here. Now look at the Samis cat. Now, always remember, eh? always remember, if I take any cells from this Samis cat, any cells from this Samis cat, so you have to know that they are identical. They are genetically identical. You have to understand this. Because why? For any organism, we started with the one sperm and one over, we form the zygote. For zygote to develop into the multicellular organism, so it must go through mitosis. 
which we're going to have a genetically cells, it's a genetically identical cells. Are you clear? But if you look at this cat, why the coat color different? Can I see that? Why the coat color actually different? Why some parts white color, some part black color? Okay, so the black color here is because of the melanin's production. Okay, because of melanin's production. So what actually happened here is this mutation take place onto the gene called thyroxinase. Still remember the thyroxinase that converts the dopaquinones to the uh, melanins. So this thyroxinase sensitive to uh, temperature. Are you clear? Okay, sensitive temperature. So, meanwhile, sensitive means that a high temperature it become inactivate, not active. But a low temperature, they become active. Okay, because temperature can give us the effect. So, means that the cat, okay, the body parts of the cat that experience a low temperature, for example, at the face here, okay, at the extremities, at the ear, so those part actually because they disperse heat more, right? Okay. So sometimes you, 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 you touch your, your ear, eh? a bit cold. Why? Because disperse heat more. Okay. Sometimes your hand, eh? cold, right? So disperse heat more. Okay. So luckily we don't have this, I mean, uh, thyroxinase. Eh? We don't have this special kind of thyroxinase. But for the cat here, semi cats, they have this thyroxinase, which is sensitive to the temperature. When high temperature, they are not active. So not active means that Melanin's productions will be low. So, okay, so I summarize here. So, so this thyroxinase gene, okay, for the thyroxinase. So this thyroxinase only active at low temperature. So at low temperature active, so means that they have the melanin production. So it means that it gives us a dark spot. Okay, and these thyroxinase are not active or inactive at high temperature. So therefore, low in melanins or no melanins production. So it means that no dark pigmentations. So therefore, it gives us the white color. Are you clear? Okay. Yeah? So this is how the cat actually responds to the environment. Because if you look at every single cell, every part of the body, by right, they should have the same. By right, they should have the same in terms of their genotype because they come from one zygote. So from one zygote to become the multicellular organism through mitosis means that it must be genetically identical. So if they're genetically identical, so now why they still show us the different coat color here, okay, particularly at the extremities, face, and also the ear where the body temperature is low. So when the body temperature is low, then what happened here is because of this mutation onto the gene called thyroxinase, they code for a special kind of thyroxinase that's sensitive to the temperature. So at the low temperature, this thyroxinase functions converts the thyroxines okay, to dopaquinones and therefore and, uh, we get these melanins. Okay? So melanins depositions take place, it give us the dark skin. So what is the rationale behind? Always remember what is the rationale because dark color absorb more heat or retain more heat. So it means that when the temperature is low, they don't want to continue to disperse the heat. Okay, they let the, the, the heat, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, release to the environment. So with the deposition of melanins, they can retain the heat energy. Can I see that? So they won't lose too much of the heat energy through these extremities. Okay. So this cat, if you look at it, I mean, start from their bond, they bond actually the whole body because they're still in the uterus of the mom. So right, in the mother uterus. So in the uterus, then you can see that the whole cat, when they are born, they are still in white color, even at their ears here and their paws and the palms here, okay, the leg all white color because they're still warm. But after they are born, when they grow up, you can see that they start to develop this dark color at the face, dark color at the ear, okay? dark color at the, the extremities because at that part, the body temperature is low. 
And when this cat grow older and older, you can see that the body color start to turn from white color to become darker and darker. Why? Because when they grow older, the metabolic rate actually lower. So they actually generate less heat energy. So the body core body temperature decrease. When the core body temperature decrease, then you can see that the thyroxine is now sensitive to the low temperature and become active. So eventually you can see that the whole body of the cat become black color. Okay. Yeah? So I go through the answer a quick one so that you can try it. Okay. Then you can check your answer later. So it's a thyroxinase, okay? No, a thyroxinase mutation on this TYR genes. It caused an eh, effective form of the thyroxinase. So only, eh, it means that increasing temperature will decrease the activity of the thyroxinase. So thyroxinase is inactive. Therefore, melanin is not produced. Okay, so the hair will be white. But at the coldest part of the coldest part of the body, so thyroxinase become active. So this was the rational, so that the dark color can actually absorb the heat energy okay uh? so this one is for information only for fingerprints okay for information only okay so fingerprints are uh, you, you can see that the patterns or the skin rich okay or the mark uh, the matogriff so you can look at your skins okay you can see that on the uh, your your thumbs or your finger you can see that you have something like this kind of okay so scientists until now still not so sure what is why we have a lot of folding like this. So they actually talk about maybe increase the sensitivity of touch. Okay, touch sensitivity. So that's why we increase the folding, it will give us more touch receptor. Okay, so these are actually controlled by our gene. Controlled by the gene. Okay, that give us a different pattern, but when the developments of the fetus and development of the fetus in the uterus, somehow this folding will have some modifications. Okay, so you look at this, okay, the thing, okay, the final detail, okay, of the pattern of skin rich are influenced by other factors during the fetal development. Okay, so for example, intra intrauterine activity, the position, how the fetus inside the womb. Okay, if you look at these two uh, identical twins, you can see that the general one is still the same. You can see that the general one is still the same, but we have some features you won't be able to see. Can you see that? Some fine features you won't be able to see. Okay, yeah? so therefore you will see that even identical twins, the fingerprints may not be the same. Okay, so this in terms of animal. How about in terms of plants? So plants, same thing. For example, if you plant two plants, okay, uh, the same plants, okay? So for example, for example, if you have a pure breeding, okay, we have pure breeding plant. When I say pure breeding plants, basically they are homozygous. They are almost all in terms of, uh, genetically identical. But we will plant them, you look at this, one we have a big distance, one a short distance, Definitely in terms of competitions for the space, competitions for the, 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 the nutrients, definitely you can see that those with space out will uh, space out, sorry, space out will grow better. Okay. So although the cells have the same genetic makeup, the different cells have different genes are active or inactive. So this means that even though in terms of genetically they are identical, but it depends on environmental factor because environmental factor can actually switch on or of a particular gene. That's very, very important. If we cannot switch on and switch off particular gene, what will happen here is you won't have any development. You try to imagine, again, okay, every single cells in our body, they remain the same. They don't respond to any stimulus. Therefore, you can see that everything looks alike, which is not true, okay? So this one, we're going to learn it in the next hour, okay, in the next lesson. We talk about the uh, gene expressions or gene control. How we control a particular genes to activate it or to deactivate a particular gene, okay? So uh, in this case, very important, we have the genes, but it might be inactive or inactive, so it form a difference, what we call the, the phenotypes here, okay? Huh? So now let us look at the last parts of the variations where we look at this, whether it belongs to the genetic variations or environmental variations.
Okay, which one? So look at this experiment first. So in this classic experiments, okay, the American uh, geneticists, the Emersons, okay, Emersons and East, cross two variety of the maze, which different markerly in the coat length. Okay, so means that coat basically means that this, the entire, okay, the coat lines. So both parental variety, okay, which is a black Mexicans and Tom Tom, they are pure breed lines. So what does this mean? In terms of the length, so black Mexican, let's say they have the big A, big A. Okay, so this is from black Mexican. For Tom Tom, you have small A, small A. So they are pure breeding. Okay, homozygous. So meiosis take place, they produce big A allele. So this one produce small A allele. So when fertilization, when you cross again okay, between these two, you get big A, small A. So in terms of big A, small A, can you see that all they are, I mean, uh, all of them, eh, they are, um, in this case, big A, small A. If all of them big A, small A, so means that they are genetically identical. If they're genetically identical, what we expect? The length must be the same. The length must be the same, correct not? if they are genetically identical for the length of the coat, okay? But if you measure, okay? So the result, when you cross it, they produce. So you look at this, the coat actually have different length. Do you realize that? Different length, okay? Why different length? By right, they are genetically identical because when you cross it, all of them are heterozygous. They must be, they must have the same length. But in this case, you can see that they don't, have a same length. They still have a certain variation here. So this variation actually belongs to genetic or environment. It cannot be genetic variation. Why cannot be genetic variation? Because all of them, they are genetically identical, big A, small A. Okay. So you can see that both parents variety were pure breed. They are pure breeding. So means that they were homozygous and a large number of loci. But the first generation were genetically different from the parents, but they are genetically the same as one another. Parents definitely different because one is big A, big A, and one is small A, small A. So the F1 is big A, small A. So however, you can see that the coat length shown in figure 15.7 will vary. So it means it's still different. So why? So when we, how, how we explain this case, they're genetically identical, but their the coat length is still different. So it means that the 10 ears were harvested from the plants that result from a cross of two pure breeds parents. So all F1, they are genetically identical. But in this collection of 10 ears, there were no genetic variants. So, eh? No genetic variants for the coat lines. So it means that all of them observe the phenotypic variants because of the environmental difference. Basically, when you plant them, the distance of the plant between them eh? or it might be because of the nutrient distribution or the nutrients, soil pH may affect the, this is what we call the coat length. So in this case, nothing to do with genetic. Why nothing to do with genetics? Because they are, they come from a pure breed parents, eh? pure breed parent. So it means that they must have, they are genetically identical. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is for a second experiment, we're going to cross the F1 generation, result in F2 generation. So they were planted in the same field, I mean, uh, compared to the previous one. So it means that environmental factor we try to control so that the previous experiment and this experiment will be the same. But now you realize that the coat length even more varied. But length, a long one, short one. Why? Because when we talk about F1, cross with F1. F1 is big A, small a, cross with big A, small a. So we're going to get half of them big A, half of them small a. They are no longer genetically identical. If you cross them, you're going to get three different varieties here. Why three? You're going to get big A, big A, big A, small a, and small a, small a. So each of them will give us a different length, okay? So why I suggest as explanations here, Okay, so the 10 ear were harvested from a plant that result from the cross of two F1. They are heterozygous parent. 
So now we can claim that all F2 codes, they are not genetically identical, right? Can I see that? Some of them will be big A, big A, some of them big A, small A, some of them small A, small A. So they are no longer genetically identical. Okay, so because the crops were harvested from the same field, so the environmental variations associated with these two, they are similar. So what is the primary reason? What is the primary reasons that we get, we get so huge and not different? The primary reason actually is the, because of the genetic, okay? They are genetically unique plant. Can I see that? So therefore, there was genetically and uh, genetic variants in additions of the environmental variants. So we cannot run away from environmental. So the first one, solely because of the environmental differences, but the second experiment is a combination of the genetics and also the environmental power, I mean, our variance here, okay? So in this case, you can see that you are very, very clear. You know that the phenotypic variance for the cope length is much greater in the group of the 10 copes shown in figure 15.8, because here we have two effect. Effect what? Genetic plus environment. So first one only, environment. Okay, so with this, we have um, um, gone through for both genetic variations and also the environmental variation. What are the differences? Okay, and also what are the effects? Okay, yeah? so with this, we have done for the first part, okay, our first hour of the lesson. Stop record first.